Hello and welcome to the shop. I needed a couple of bolt action pins for some folks at work, so I contacted my good buddy Mike DeLalter. I ordered up a couple of custom blanks, and today in the video, you're going to see me turn two Magnum bolt action pins. I've got a couple of label cast Alumalite blanks here. I picked them up from Mike DeLalter. One of them is a Second Amendment blank. The other one is just a black and white U.S. flag. They're both cast on 10 millimeter tubes and both will be eventually assembled onto a bolt action, a Magnum bolt action pin kit. Uh, these are for a couple of uh, friends of mine at work. Prior to turning, I've gone ahead and taken these blanks over to my disc sander and with my sanding jig, I've squared both ends right down to the brass tube. My plan today is to turn these blanks between centers even though my bushings are not turned between center bushings. I've got a 60 degree dead center in the headstock and a 60 degree live center in the tailstock and it should turn just fine. I've got the blank turned down and I'm happy with how it matches at the bushings on either end. The one thing I want to do now is as you move your finger across the blank, I can feel a few tooling marks. So one of the things I've been doing lately is I take an acrylic blank. This one has a nice flat edge from where it was inside the mold. I've got my 150 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to wrap it around the blank like this and we'll use it to sand our blank smooth. This will enable us to get a glass smooth finish from end to end. Now we only need to to use the acrylic blank with the 150 grit paper. Once we get past the 150 we can sand normally because as soon as you get done you will not feel any tool marks in your blank. I've only made a couple of passes and notice how you have the real scratched up areas and the somewhat shiny areas. You can see them really well when the blank is turning the scratchy areas are the high areas, the shiny areas are the low areas. By using this blank and the paper in this method, we're going to take that down toward the entire blank, and this is how you know it's perfect. When the entire blank is scuffed, you can stop sanding. Now, I am not applying a lot of pressure, and I do have the uh, uh, back system shut off for the moment. I'll get that turned back on, but you can see how the blank starts to, to really sort of scuff as I uh, run the paper over it. I'm not really applying much pressure, just just nominal pressure uh, to keep the uh, blank and the paper again. Or I'm sorry, the, yes, the acrylic blank and the paper against my blank. I've got one little stubborn area right there in the middle. Now take a look at that. Looks like the entire blank has been scuffed from end to end. At this point, we're going to stop sanding. And because this is acrylic, notice notice the scars we made. What we want to do is take our sandpaper and we're going to sand from end to end on the blank trying to reduce those scars as much as possible. Once we've reduced the scars we'll be ready to move on to the next grit of paper. I finished sanding from end to end and you can see that the conical scratches are removed from the blank so we're ready to go to the 200 grit sandpaper and this blank from end to end is just super smooth. I mean there, there's no waviness, there's no tool marks it feels amazing. Now, some of you may look at my bushings and say, yeah, but man, you are just tearing the heck out of your bushings. But bear in mind, bushings are cheap. Uh, I, you know, you could probably get 25, 30 sets of pins out of a set of bushings being as aggressive as I am with them. And, uh, you know, they're super cheap and I would rather have ugly bushings and a, a beautiful, gorgeous pin than have these pristine bushings and my pins look rough down here at the end. So be sure as you're cleaning up your conical scratches, I come down here with the sandpaper and I turned off the camera before I finished, but I'm sanding like this right at the end. It's tearing my bushing up, but it's getting rid of any scratches right down toward the end of the blank where it's going to meet the components. And if you take a close look at pins you've made, you may find a pin or two that it just doesn't look really 
really all that great right next, you know, right next to the component. And that's because we were too worried about our bushings and not worried enough about our blank. Let's go ahead. I'm going to move to 200 grit sandpaper. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and go up to 400 and then we're going to move to the micro mesh pads. I will stop when I'm done with my 400 grit and show you the blank right before I take it to micro mesh. As promised, here's a quick peek at the blank. I just finished sanding with 400 grit. You're going to notice a big difference once I get done with micro mesh pad number one. The lathe is spinning at about 840 RPMs. I had it spinning at about 2600 RPMs whenever I was turning the uh, blank, but when I'm sanding and polishing, I really like to slow my lathe down. Notice that slurry buildup. We're going to clean that off the pad by re-dipping it in the water. And you can already see the, the uh, blank starting to shine. When I use the sandpaper, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the blank, with the exception of the first pad that I'm using with the uh, acrylic blank to level the blank. I'm just putting a light pressure on the blank, just enough to scuff it and remove scratches. When I'm using the micro mesh, I'm putting a little bit of pressure on the blank uh, because I really want to clean up any remaining scratches. Take a look at that. This is, this is what we're taking off the blank. I'll go ahead and wipe the blank down with a little paper towel to get the excess slurry off and take a look at how much more clear this blank is. With each pad, the clarity will increase monumentally. I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off. We're going to run through the other eight pads and I'll show you what it looks like right before I buff it. Just finished up with those micro mesh pads. The blank looks really, really nice. What I'm going to do is go ahead now and apply a little Renaissance wax. We're going to let that wax haze up, and then I'm going to go ahead and put this onto a pin mandrel. Now, I like to use a pin mandrel whenever I buff because these blanks are kind of small. They're hard to hold on to, but if I put it on a pin mandrel, I can get a good grip on the end of the mandrel, and I can hold this uh, against the buffing pad and really, really get a nice shine on it. So let's get a little bit of wax on there, and then we'll uh, move to the buffing pads. I just rub the wax in until I feel friction on my finger from the blank. That lets me know that uh, I'm finished. And the nice thing about using your finger is it's not going to put scratches on the blank like a paper towel could. I've bumped my lathe speed up to around 1200 RPMs. You can see a slight haze on the blank. But as we start to buff, just wait till the blue section comes back around and you will see a definite shine starting to appear. Take a look at that blank. Look at the way the light reflects. All right, I'm gonna get this over to the assembly table. And I'm going to go ahead and prepare to turn the second blank. I've got my second blank chucked up, and once again, I'll be turning between centers. Now, people see me do this, and I get asked quite often because I used to turn on a mandrel, and people will ask, you know, what's better? Is turn between center better than turning with a mandrel? And my answer to that is going to be no, not necessarily. I think what's better is what works best in your shop and what gives you the best result. A mandrel or turn between center are both excellent methods for turning. The primary reason why I use turn between center is it's super convenient. Most of the pins I turn, in this case bolts, but sometimes Monarchs or Sierras, are single blank pins. So to dump them between a dead center and a live center, uh, it's just super quick, super easy and you know, lets me turn a pin uh, very quickly. Uh, the only time I still do use uh, a mandrel, and, and my favorite mandrel is the mandrel saver, and the reason I use the mandrel is if I ever turn a pin that has uh, at least two components, you know, so uh, for example, a slimline would have, would have a top uh, part, a cap part, and a bottom part. I would use a mandrel for that, but otherwise, um, I just like TBC because it's quick and easy, and as I've proven here, you do not have to purchase special bushings. You can use your standard pin bushings. So this particular blank, I don't have a lot to add to the turning on this one, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn it, 
and uh, we'll stop and take a look at it right before we do some sanding. I have assembled a lot of bolt action pins on the channel in the past, so we're gonna move kind of quickly on this, but notice the bolt, you push it forward and lock it down. First thing I wanna do is flip the bolt. Um, I do have a video on uh, exclusively doing this. If you'd like to look that up, I'll put a link in the comments below, but we're just gonna very quickly loosen up the mechanism and flip the bolt. Then we'll tighten her back down. While we've got the screwdriver in our hand, we'll go ahead and do the same for the other cap. And when you do that, now you'll notice the bolt is conflicting with the clip. So let's loosen up the back of the pin and let's rotate our clip around to the notch on the opposite side. Just gotta find that notch. Whoops, I'm missing it. There it is. It's rather hard to see, but there is a little notch in there that I am missing. There it is. The next step is we want to insert this little grommet into the front section of our blank. Now I want the flag to be toward the back of the pin, and if you take a look at this you'll notice it's got a little line on there. That little line is an area that is not quite as round as the rest of the piece, so it, it's easier to start. I'm going to take one of the bushings I used to turn the pin, and we're going to put this in our press. This bushing just protects the end of the pin. Let me tighten this up a little bit. There we go. And we're just gonna push it in flat with the front of the, of the blank. We're gonna grab the uh, grommet for the other blank, put it in place, put our protection on the back of the pin. We'll push that into place. While we've got this uh, blank in our hands, let's go ahead and grab the back piece and 
let's see, we need to think about how we want this to lay on the desk. I'm thinking it should lay like that with the, st the stars up. So I'm gonna press it that in that direction. It's gonna line it up here. Give it a nice firm press. Same goes for this one. I really kind of like, I, I, I don't want to cover up any of the text. Whoops, sorry about that. I don't want to cover up any of the text, so we're going to make sure that the clip runs down the red uh, uh, stripe of the flag so that the pin lays like this and the Second Amendment shows. Okay, we'll line her up. Press her into place. Whoa. I'm operating in a very small spot here. And uh, anytime I bump this table, <laughs> uh, things go rolling. Let's go ahead and put the, there we go, spring on the back of our refill. And then we'll thread the nib section into the pin. Let's give it a test. Perfect. Grab the other one. Once again, we'll install the spring. Drop it into, this time I'll drop it into the nib section first. It really doesn't matter whether you put it into the blank first or the nib section. It's going to do the same thing. Test. And I really like that. Take a look at those pins. I wanted to zoom in and give you a better look at these pens because I am very happy with how they turned out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're interested in custom label blanks, I'm gonna put my buddy Mike's contact information in the comments below. Be sure to give him a call. Uh, he can make the blanks that you saw in today's video as well as pretty much anything your imagination can come up with. I want to thank you for joining me in the shop today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.